All right, boys and girls, we are going to be reading the next book in our Learning How to Be Yourself unit. Remember that our essential question this week is what makes every person special? So, as you read this book with me, I want you to think about which makes, what makes each of these characters special. Who knows what a peacock is? What's a hen? Do these birds look alike in any way? How? Or how are they different? I'm going to read Three Hens and a Peacock. Who can point to the peacock? This is the peacock right here. And here are the three hens. How do you think the hens are feeling in this book? Hmm. Let's read the story to find out why the hens look this way. Are they happy? Are they upset? Are they jealous? Let's see. Three Hens and a Peacock, written by Lester L. Lemonak, illustrated by Henry Cole. This is actually a Book of, a, of the Year award right here. So, it looks like it's going to be a good book. <gasps> Anybody know what that is? It's peacock feathers. The peacock has beautiful feathers. Three hens and a peacock. This looks like the farm that they're going to be living on. Things were quiet on Tucker's farm. The cows chewed their cud, the hens clucked and pecked and laid their eggs. The old hound stretched out on the porch watching and listening. Once in a while, someone would stop to buy tomatoes or corn, perhaps a quart of milk. Nothing unusual happened there until... I wonder what this is. That peacock showed up. Peacock was in the box. The cows and the hens and the old hound kept right on doing what they're always done. But that peacock had never lived on a farm. He had no idea what to do. So he spread his fancy feathers and set to shrieking. Eventually the peacock wandered down the road. When cars whizzed by, he shook his feathers and cried out in his loudest voice. Of course, folks stopped for a closer look. Why do you think they're taking pictures of the peacock? Huh. Day after day, more folks stopped to admire the peacock, and they all bought tomatoes, corn, eggs, and milk. Business on the Tucker's farm was booming. That means it was doing really well. Everyone seemed happy to have visitors stopping by. So the visitors started stopping by when this peacock came to the farm. What's going on with these hens right here? What's going on? They don't seem too happy. Why aren't they unhappy? But trouble was brewing in the hen house. The hens were squawking and clucking and flapping their wings. We do all the work around here. I'd like to see that peacock lay one single egg. Exactly. He just struts it around screaming. I suppose fancy feathers are more important than laying eggs. That lazy peacock gets all the attention and we do all the work. So, right here, this is the hen house. They're talking right now about that. And Peacock is outside of the hen house. 
And he heard, overheard them saying that. So how do you think that makes Peacock feel? Because they're talking about him. The peacock had heard every word. For days he moped around, moaning and groaning. I wish I could be more useful around here. Oh. Clucked one hen. The others ruffled their feathers. The old hound stretched and slowly raised his head. Why not let the peacock stay here to be useful while you hens take the glamorous job down the road? Okay, so... The job of the hens is to make all the eggs, and so they're all upset because the peacock's not doing anything but just standing there pretty with his feathers. And so they decide that, or the dog says, why don't you start doing what the hens do, and the hens go see how the life is for the peacock. So let's see what's going to happen. Do you think that... The peacock is going to be able to lay eggs. Let me give you a hint, boys and girls. This peacock with the pretty feathers is actually a boy. So do you think that this boy peacock, this, this, um, this boy bird can lay eggs? Mm, I don't think so. We'll have to see. The three hens began clucking to one another. What a wonderful plan. Yes, it's a fabulous idea. Oh, ladies, we simply must fancy up our feathers tonight. Ain't nothing but our brightest beads, bangles, and bows. We'll stop traffic for sure. Why, you girls know I can strut with the best of them. The peacock perked up. Let's do it, he declared. Tomorrow I'll stay here, sit on a nest, and cluck. And we'll get... Oh, gussied up, said the hens. We'll be glamorous. <laughs> I don't know. At sunrise. Oh, my goodness. Look at these hens. At sunrise the next morning, the hens strutted down the road. The peacock marched right to the hen house and poked his head inside. Uh-oh. The hens flocked by the road waiting for a car. When they saw one approaching, they clucked and squawked and flapped their wings in a flurry of feathers. But every car whizzed right on by. The peacock sucked in his tummy and willowed from left to right, trying to squeeze through the tiny hen house door. His front half was in, his back half was out. Why aren't the why aren't the cars stopping for the hens? You think the peacock was it's gonna be good at laying eggs? Why was the car why were the cars stopping for the hens? I mean for the peacock. What's so be what's so great about the peacock? Yeah, his beautiful feathers. Do they have beautiful feathers? No, not really. But they do do a good job at me laying eggs, huh? So let's see what's going to happen next. Down by the road, those hens tried every chicken trick they knew. Still, no car stopped. Finally, the peacock made it into the hen house. He held his breath and pushed with all his might, but no matter how hard he tried, he could not lay a single egg. Not one. This is so silly. He's a boy. He can't lay eggs. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. What's that peacock doing in the hen house, said Farmer Tucker. Who knows, said Mrs. Tucker. And what are those hens doing down by the road? Not a one of them is up here laying eggs. Well, the way things are going, we aren't likely to have anyone buying eggs today, said Farmer Tucker. We need that peacock down there stopping cars. So if, if the peacock is in there laying eggs, in the eggs, he's not really laying eggs because he can't lay eggs, peacocks don't lay eggs, then they're not going to be able to, their, their business, their farm is not going to be doing good today because the, what makes the money is the, the hens that lay the eggs. And they're out here trying to stop the cars.
When the peacock heard that, he smiled, the biggest smile you've ever saw on a bird's beak. I am helping, he thought. He squirmed back and forth until he popped out of the cramped hen house. Then he trotted off to find the hens. So he heard far Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Tucker talking about how they need the peacock to stand on the side of the road for people to stop. And so now he realized that he was helping all along. He didn't think he was, but he is. The exhausted hens were all clucked out. Every feather was out of place. What a day! We couldn't get one car to stop. It's true. Why most of them didn't even slow down? The peacock met the hens as they trudged on up the road. I can tell you I'm no good at laying eggs, he said. I'm just not meant for it. One hen nodded. I put on my stellar strut, and even I couldn't stop a single car, she said. I have to hand it to you, fancy feathers. Your job is harder than it looks. The other hens agreed. The peacock looked relieved. So, the hens marched back to the hen house. The peacock strutted down the road. The whole old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening, and things were quiet again on Tucker's farm. The end. Uh-oh. Oh my goodness. I wonder if this means there's going to be another book. Look at this. So, here's a Here's the dog. He's got this face like, hmm. And another truck is dropping off something. What was in it? And look, it looks like it was a big old egg. I wonder what's going to hatch out of that egg. Huh. They all look concerned. <laughs> this is a cute, silly book, but it taught us a great lesson. What was this awesome lesson that it taught us? The hens and the peacock learn to be happy with what they do well, instead of wishing that they were more like each other. So, it taught us to learn how to be ourselves and not worry about what other people are doing or what other people can do, because we all have a unique and special thing about us that help that that helps the world around us like I am able to be a teacher I teach I love to teach and I know that I can do my job well if I am a teacher and teaching all of you I wouldn't change it I know that I am helping you all so Different things. Doctors. Doctors are taking care of the sick. They are helping everyone. They don't need to. They don't need to act like a teacher, to, because the students are getting. Are, this because of the students. They have patients that they're helping, and a teacher has students that a teacher is help that the teacher is helping. You all have a talent or something that is helpful. It may be something that you do around the house that is helpful, or it may be something that you do for your friends that is helpful. You all are really good and great learners. You are helpful to me when you are learning and you are wanting to learn more. So, Everyone has special talent. Everyone has something special that makes, that everyone has something that makes you special. So I, what makes a person special? It's, it can be different. Anybody can, anybody can ha do something that they, if they put their mind to it. Now, I want you all to 
just, you don't have, we're not going to do a task after this book, but I do want you to think about something that, you, that is special about you that is helpful to others or that just puts a smile on other people's faces. So think about that and think about what Peacock and the Hens learned in the story. I look forward to reading the next book in our unit with you, and I look forward to talking with you tomorrow about the three hens and the peacock.